Welcome back to another episode of Questions and Answers with Engaging Disability with the Gospel. I am your host, Ashley Belknap, and I am the Director of Engaging Disability. And today we are taking a small break from our usual format in order to have a conversation about the impact of disability in the midst of our current situation, which is the coronavirus or COVID-19. Um, our viewers have been writing in questions about what are other families doing during this time? Um, other families during are impacted by disability. How are they staying connected? How are they staying energized and encouraged? And um, what are they doing to take steps forward in the midst of things that are hard and challenging and, and with no end in sight at the moment? So we heard your questions and we thought it was a great opportunity to bring in um, a longtime friend and the founding director of um, this ministry um, is Steph Kubach. And Steph, we're really glad to have you on the show as our first guest. Um, welcome. Thank you. Say, great to be here. I'm so glad you're here. And viewers, you're in for a treat. She processes what life has and is like in the midst of COVID-19 for her family. Um, I've known Steph since 2005 or 2006, um, right? before she started this ministry, which back then was under the name Monet Special Needs Ministries. Um, and she directed this ministry and got it to where it was when I took over four years ago. And I'm just so indebted to her leadership and her friendship and her genuineness and willingness to process, um, be, even just being a mom of a, a fellow moms of kids with disabilities and just the blessing that has been to me along the way. So I'm so thankful for Steph. I want Steph, I want you to give them a little bit of an intro to what life is like now um, and where you are and what you're doing. And then we'll dive into questions. Okay, great. So thanks, Ash. I'm so glad that you took over the ministry and you've done an awesome job the last few years. It's been really exciting to watch you just take the ministry to a whole new level. So I'm really, I'm really thankful for you on that level. And of course, thankfully for your friendship as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, for the people who don't know me, I live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, right? I'm the very last telephone pole on a dirt road. <laughs> so we're in the place that's home of the Amish, right? So we don't have a buggy, but some of our neighbors do. And so that was the driving hazard that my uh, older son, Fred, had to learn to navigate when he learned how to drive. Uh, so yeah, I've been married to my husband, Fred, uh, for 37 years this month, which is hard to believe. It's been 37 years, but Fred retired from his job at New Holland. He's an engineer last year, and so that's been really fun to have him home. He's working part-time doing a home improvement business right now. So um, two sons. My oldest son, Freddie, is 30 now, So, uh, which is also hard to believe. <laughs> and he's married uh, to Cecilia. They live in uh, Washington, D.C., and just had our very first grandchild, born in August, Miss Caroline June Hubach. So our little mantra is we like to say we're over the moon for Caroline June. <laughs> oh, did I? You mentioned a picture? That's right. There she is. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah. Although, it, you know, I, I just figured if I tried to find it on my phone, I'd get lost somewhere. So I went for the old fashioned paper version. <laughs> anyway, we are having a great time um, experiencing what my mother says is a temporary form of insanity that comes when you become a grandparent, which is absolutely true. Um, so our younger son, Tim, is 27. Tim's our son who has Down syndrome. And Tim lives in uh, an apartment in the daylight basement of our house we have a ranch house here so um so he's got his own kitchen and living dining room little gig down there so that's worked out really well for us at this stage you know this post the, the whole transition into adulthood period um i'd like to say that was a really well planned idea it really was <laughs> just kind of happened that way we just sort of did the basement that way actually so that my uh in-laws could stay with us more easily when uh when the kids were younger and to have a hangout place for Freddie's friends in high school and uh, and then all, we looked at it one day and said you know <laughs> somebody else said it this could really be a great apartment and we we're like oh well what do you know <laughs> so so it just goes to prove that sometimes you don't even have good plans in your own mind but God still does something <laughs> with you otherwise what feels like random activities sometimes right so let's see my you know you want me to talk a little bit more about my background you know my background yes. is economics originally and then I recently got a master's of arts and theological studies from Covenant Seminary so I 
I like to joke that I'm an econologian, right? <laughs> It's just, it's just mostly a scary sounding name. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, but I, I actually have no formal education in the area of special ed, right? It's all been in the, the, the parenting school of uh, uh, 27 years of on the job training with Tim. So um, uh, that I've really learned the, the disability ministry world and, you know, working on our local church level when the boys were younger. And then, as you mentioned, you know, eventually starting the ministry at M&A. And then I ended up 2017 uh, collaborating with Covenant Seminary uh, as their research fellow in disability ministries. So I'm still working from home part-time and more, you know, doing a little, little bit of travel here and there. I was, <laughs> but now I'm not, but either anybody else. <laughs> You're in good company. I'm in good company. <laughs> and we should also tell our viewers um, way back when you first wrote your book and then this, what has happened in this last year. So tell us a little bit about your book. This is a new version, same like different book, coming alongside people touched by disability. So it's not just a new cover, I just two new chapters, new endorsements, new forward by Johnny Tata, some additional things like that. So um, anyway, so yeah, I wrote the original book in 2006 before I had the job at m and um, And sometimes people ask me, like, uh, you know, I don't know, I even once in a while end up on, on like writers forums, you know, and they'll be like, oh, how did you get into writing? And I said, I never had any desire to write a book, actually. <laughs> Just kind of happened. <laughs> a lot of, it was, a, it really was a, and maybe this is the econologian side of me, right? It was a practical, it was a practical need to actually write down what I was saying so I didn't have to repeat it verbally. <laughs> so, no, that doesn't sound like a very inspiring uh, uh, motivation, but no, but it, it, uh, I'm so glad you did is one of the best resources and also it'll say for our viewers i'm going to link her book in the show notes the description the title where you can purchase it so oh, super super also there you know there's also the dvd series you might want to let people know about yes. you won't recognize the woman on that series because she's definitely does not have white hair and is at least 10 pounds less than this one but anyway <laughs> We will but link yeah, that. the material is still, it's still good. So, um, it is so good. Yeah. So that's out there too. And, and then, my, you know, what, Asher, maybe we could also do my personal website because that kind of connects to everything as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. We'll put all that in the show notes to make it easy for people to find. Yeah. But, anyways, you know, that, and when I did write the book, it really was written as a gift for the church. I mean, just hoping that if we could just start to have a dialogue, right? At least have a dialogue about, about what is, how do we think about disability biblically? How do we better understand the issues families are facing and how can we respond uh, in a way that's more consistent with uh, uh, the calling of the kingdom, right? I mean, so that that was that motivation uh, in terms of what I was trying to do besides the practical thing of doing it in a way that it replicated itself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I'll put you on the spot a little bit with this question. Yeah. But what have you noticed in terms of the conversation? How has it changed since yeah. you first wrote the book to the second edition? Yeah, I mean, first of all, that there's so many more people in it, right? I mean, yeah. So, so that was part of what motivated me to write the, to do the update as well. What it wasn't just that. I mean, I'm really glad there are more people in it. It's been it's been amazing, and I'm sure for you to watch uh, as well, even in the last four years that you've been in this job, to just see how many more voices there are, right? Um, so the good thing is there are a lot more people paying attention to the subject. The opportunity that comes out of that, which is also maybe a risk factor <laughs> as well, right, is that sometimes some of those conversations, uh, I think there's... I think they benefit from some theological guide rails. How's that? Yes. Absolutely. So I tried to address that a little bit in the yes. two new chapters I put in the book, right? Yes. So you, you do an uh, awesome job. Of that. Don't forget the framework, folks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. It's like so any any topic area, right? We have to say, hey, what are the what are the guardrails, the guide rails of scripture? Right. Say to us in this area we, where we're trying to find a path 
forward, right? And how do we honor, you know, honor the word of God and and also at while we <laughs> while we are a blessing to others in the process. Right? So, if you haven't read her book, I encourage you to put it on your to be read list. Maybe you have a little bit more time now to read or add to your summer, summer reading list. Yeah. So as we're thinking about the conversation of disability ministry, interstage left yeah. COVID-19. Yeah. And so we're going to switch gears for just a minute and kind of get your thoughts on not just ministry, but also life mm -hmm. as a mom, um, as a ministry leader and how what things are coming through and, and how you're processing our new realities yeah. and the impact of that on disability, things you're seeing and noticing that I think our viewers will hate with and find encouragement in that they're not alone thinking some yeah. of their thoughts. So our first question was, during this unique season, many of our families are experiencing unique losses. A lot of those losses are things that families not impacted by disability might not think about such as absence of therapies or lack of respite or social skill regression or change, just the changes to routine and what that does to the norm. Mm -hmm. We would love to hear how your family's navigating this season um, and maybe what losses you have felt and how you're processing some of those. Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. Um, first thing I always like to caveat when I talk about my family is that, uh, is I do recognize in the big scheme of disability world, I we are on the easier end of the spectrum by far. <laughs> we know that, and that's one of the blessings that God's given us to have enough difficulty to recognize the in, to have some insights right into what other families are dealing with, but also recognizing that we do not have nearly the level of complexity. So I just like to lay that out there in advance for somebody who's been with really young kids with significant behavioral and communication issues right and or kids with really involved medical diagnoses so i've thought about all of those folks a lot this last month or so here just really wondering how everyone is doing right? <laughs> So, uh, so I just, I just want to say that as far as, you know, I think one of the interesting things, one of the things I point out in my book, and this is not a, a dog and pony show about the book, a lot of my thoughts are written down there, so I have a tendency to bounce back and forth from it, right? So, um, is that, is Helen Featherstone's quote on the, uh, the differences, and this is a paraphrase because I can't remember the exact quote, but the differences families affected by disability face or differences in degree of the of the difficulties that all families face, right? So I think that's, that's that wisdom still applies to the COVID situation. I would say that probably applies to our family the most is the differences of degree. So if you think about it, right, everybody's experienced a loss of freedom on a certain level. And I'm not by any means even attempting to navigate it in that world politically. That is not my point. But just fundamentally, a certain level of loss of human freedom, right? To move as we choose and work as we choose and you know at, by necessity right um but that is still a real loss and as i told you earlier we talked beforehand um there's losses losses in life still need to be grieved and i think sometimes they have a way have, of kind of accumulating at least they do in me right i don't know what I mean, else. that's kind of little little losses like that tend to accumulate until the all of a sudden they as my husband says i'm in I'm made of dangerous engineering material. I don't give any signs of stress until I get to snap. <laughs> so, so, but loss of freedom is one of them, right? Um, and, and so you sort of don't even realize how your life works in certain ways that you might exercise that freedom until you all of a sudden don't have it, right? So maybe the way as an extrovert that you just really exercise your freedom and meet some of your personal needs is to get out and just go somewhere run errands you don't need to run right <laughs> you know how it is sometimes you just want to be out with the people right and so so that the loss of freedom loss of expectations i mean actually you and i are both we're, you know we're planners we're visionaries we're planners you know <laughs> we may drive the uh the uh um uh more practical folks around it's crazy <laughs> But if you're, but the more that you are prone to have the gift yes. of planning, right, the more challenging this situation is because you just constantly find yourself bumped up against 
not only have all the plans I've made pretty much been decimated, right? But, but I don't even know how to think about the subject of planning and, and my whole propensity to the way I tend to organize my life is around planning, you know, or, or seeing what could be and how could we get here and when you can't see past your nose right now, right? And when the rules are constantly changing, the, the ground is shifting underneath. So um, rhythms and routines. I think we just all live in these rhythms and routines that we're not always conscious of. I think there are people that really are like structure so much that routines, they're very conscious of their routines because they just like them so much, right? Then there's some people like myself that I have rhythms and routines that I probably don't really fully recognize, but when they're not there, all of a sudden I'm, I'm feeling kind of boundarylessness. <laughs> I don't know what word I want. I think I just made one. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I used it the wrong way. But um, and 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 I'll get to eventually how this affects our whole family effect of my disability. But I think all these things are true. Loss of of uh, privacy, I would say. Like so, as much as I like to get out and do useless errand running, sometimes I also like my space from time to time. And and I'll give you a, a maybe, maybe this is a helpful example. <laughs> Yesterday I was I was I had communicated I thought <laughs> that I was going to work in my office for the day, and the next thing you know, my husband who has a home improvement company and is very diligently trying to work on some things that our house would need to be taken care of, decided he was going to fix the window in my office, but I didn't realize that he was that was we weren't communicating right and so i'm thinking i have this little space this little like 12 by 12 foot space that's mine blocked out for the afternoon and then all of a sudden my window's gone and i'm like and i'm just finding that in some the things i was trying to do like writing were not working so i decided to move in the other room and then tim started playing his electronic drum set right below where i met <laughs> and finally i just quit right i mean i was just like but um anyway but, but we do, everybody's experienced a certain loss of privacy right now in the sense that we're all around each other more. Doesn't make the people who are fixing windows bad people. It doesn't make the people who are trying to work in their office bad people or the drum players bad people, right? But, um, but loss of access to employment, right? For Like for Tim, and Tim, for example, is in the high risk categories that heart repair, cardiac repair, and, and has had a number of uh, really bad pneumonias in the past. So he he's a cart guy, right, at the grocery store. So he's done that. He was doing that job up until the end of March, I think. And then we started to get more and more uncomfortable because um, we're in Pennsylvania, right? So we're just outside in New York and New Jersey, right? So um, with just where the where the graphs were headed, right? <laughs> and so so we so we made some hard decisions with him, you know, about. Uh, his other jobs in medical office, right? So we were two for two. <laughs> and so we ended up having to talk to both of his employers. And and uh, so so his whole rhythm and routine has been completely blown out of the water. And in addition to that, um, uh, the face-to-face uh, -face supportive relationships that people have are missing. And for Tim, that's his care. He has caregiver a, a caregiver that comes three times a week um, that uh largely i mean it provides certainly elements of transportation assistance with cooking and some things like that but it's a truly enjoyable friendship to him as well right and so she hasn't been able to be here for the last month by our choice because again we just felt this wasn't the best thing for tim for his health so um uh yeah so you know, and, and then a loss of a sense of security, which actually reveals in many ways where we find our security, even though we don't think we find our security. So all that stuff kind of rambled together is true for everybody. But I think when it comes to families affected by disability, um, you would think we would already be used to a certain loss of freedom, right? But I think maybe when we lose more freedom, it maybe it actually gets our hackles up a little bit more, you know, if we're perfectly honest, right? Because you just, there's a side, is there not a side that goes, really? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and in terms of expectations, again, that planning, you know, one of the things that having an older child with a disability, one of the things that, uh, you know, I th one of the questions I think we got most tired of, a well-intentioned question, not a bad question, right? But when Tim was 
say in high school, graduated from high school. Well, what's the plan, right? <laughs> you know, any of us want to go, uh, a, yeah, a plan is too, too concrete <laughs> or, right? There's like, you're, it's, it's just much more of a collaborative, ongoing, real time negotiating with life process in some ways because there's so many variables that you can't control so you think on a certain sense we'd kind of be used to the fact that we can't plan but maybe what happens there i think what does happen there for me and if i'm rambling on too long <laughs> just let me know what happens for me in that scenario is there's so many things as freddie says freddie's very freddie's a financial planner and he's actually really wise at giving counsel to people and he says you know he told us one day he said you can't mom you can't plan tim's life any more than you would have planned mine you know, he said, but you can prepare for it, right? And so I think this is just this whole scenario is another reminder that there's, there are certain things we can plan for and other things we just need to prepare for. And right now there are more things that we need to shift our emphasis more to preparing than planning. And I think that takes, that will actually lower the frustration level. So I'm kind of drifting into solutions there a little bit. Yeah, um, you're leading us beautifully. Yeah. I don't want to cut you off of any losses, but we can transition into that yeah. too. Yeah, so I want to say one more loss. I know to me personally, yeah. and this is true of everybody, but I think, and I, I just actually scheduling to do this made me think about actually taking care of this need. And that's a loss of supportive friendships, you know, face-to-face -face supportive friendships. So the friendships aren't gone, right? But that, that I don't know, something about physical presence that really is, really important human beings and so not being able to just um see either my friends at church or or uh um so two two particular ones in my life that i did on a regular basis at least i have a good friend who has a daughter with down syndrome that i walked with uh two or three times a week right and so that hour that we would walk we just like take on the problems of the world right? <laughs> on the end of our kids and challenges and you're like and i really miss that that natural dialogue in that time spent there. And then a really good close friends of ours at church that um, have walked this path with us for many years. We eat dinner together with every week, right? And now we aren't eating dinner together every week. So this is it. That's those small things, but I, I, what it made me realize, and I'm beaming the solutions here in a second. I had one more thought. So I wanted to say, you know what, what I think when you think about the losses and you think about the challenges, uh, what is really reinforced to me is the whole, the whole concept that's that's just laid out so beautifully in Genesis one that that we are image bearers created right to to exercise dominion over creation right so we're meant to carry God's character into the world in 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 creative and productive in ways that we engage with with people and nature and culture around us right and so that's true for everybody right with without disabilities and and so what is kind of what's kind of done in one hand is it illuminates the reality that so many of our children in particular our adults with disabilities are often um live a somewhat quarantined existence all the time of not being not being supported in such a way that they can that they can they carry God's character into the world, but that they don't have the vehicles, right, always to do it in as many ways as they could, right? right. So, so it's sort of, I think it's raised a level of awareness there. It's, and it's kind of reminded me just that, um, that when we feel truncated in our purpose, right, and this is good for us to remember for, for our, either our family members or friends who are, are living with disability when we feel truncated and we all feel truncated right now i think we feel truncated in our purpose um uh, it we, we start to wither right there's a side of us it just starts to we get we wither we might get angry right we have so i might experience a whole bunch of different emotions depending on maybe our personality type um until we're willing to be redirected right or until we can can actually we either need to be redirected or, or we have to re-engage our surroundings in a way that we can rearrange things and move a different a different way um and depending on and some of us that kind of engagement's easier than for others so i don't know that was a really long rant no. how we do it i don't know that gave you a, a, a there really? I, I have probably struggled more than anybody else in my house tim went to, i had an interesting conversation with tim if i can tell you just a little tim story mm -hmm. 
we were walking, we were trying to get him to walk on a regular basis um, because he walked for hours a day as a cart guy, right? And as an adult with Down said, most adults with Down so he really struggles with this weight, right? And we try not to make it about weight. You know, we try to make it about being healthy, um, healthy eating, taking care of your body, you know, keeping himself strong for work. And um, so we were going for a walk the other day and and I was, and he had taken American government in high school. So I, so I thought, I said, Tim, you know, I said, we're kind of in this interesting place where there's a sort of a sticky wicket between the federal government and the state government as far as society, who's supposed to do what, right? And he said, what's a sticky wicket? And I said, oh, well, you know what? Actually, I could probably describe it to you better if I really understood where the term came from. So we looked it up on my phone that I had in my pocket. And it's actually a term from cricket. And it's a way that the ball drifts in, you know, when when it, it's being thrown in cricket, right? It, it makes it very challenging to know how to hit it, right? It's, that's the way it's coming in. And and so, uh, as I said, it just creates confusion to know how you're supposed to approach it. And he said, and he puts his hand on his heart and he goes, like I feel in here right now. And I said, yes, that's it. You probably do feel a lot of confusion right now about like what you're doing and where we're going and when, the, you know, when, what, where, how, why, right? And so, uh, so anyway, in, in Tim's usual wisdom, it was just, that was, that's kind of Tim's perspective on, if you ask him if he misses work, he says no, you know, because I think he's enjoying his free time. But I think if you ask him if he missed, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you he misses Kathleen, the person who comes to the house the most, yeah. Relationships. So, relationship, yeah. So, I really appreciate the themes that are coming out in your answers. Just the, to encourage our viewers that we all feel that loss of relationships, and we and I think it's ingrained in us to fight against walking by faith, even though we're called to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. and that that is a theme of scripture that we all embrace, and but really we're planners. We most of us like a good plan and so um, I hear coming through some of that those things are being really called to exercise walking by faith and trust mm -hmm. in the Lord and what he's doing and it does create that confusion in the heart and Tim's illustration sums it up perfectly uh, so remember this, that, that phrase holding the, the steering wheel with a light touch right that's that's what I think walking by faith really looks like right it's not it's not that you're just like hands off and let the car go <laughs> wherever it goes right there is intentional steering. You are actually going somewhere, right? You think you're going somewhere, but you're holding that steering wheel with the light touch. You're not white knuckling it. It's so easy uh, for me. It's just so easy when it gets, when you get in a situation like this, where it's so uncertain where we're going, where so many plans that you did have have become, you're disappointed, right? I'm disappointed about things that have dropped off my plate this spring. And uh, it's easy to want to grab it. <laughs> and, you know, and it's like, nope. You don't need to just let go of it, but you also can't white knuckle it. You're going to have to just, you know, you're just going to have to get on to the ride. And so, yeah. So I think, so that leads me, it, that leads me probably easily into your next one. Opportunities. Yeah. yeah. So our next question is kind of the flip side of this. So what are the opportunities that you've seen for growth? Maybe in you, maybe in Tim, maybe your church has engaged or is growing. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts there? What have you seen God doing? Well, if you think about the steering wheel illustration, right? I think it's really, um, it's really in the big picture level. Of this, and you're not like the big picture. <laughs> it's just asking where, what, where is God taking us in life, right? What, what is, you know, what does God want for Tim's life and for ours, right? And sometimes we forget, honestly, to ask that question, or we might ask it, and really, you like. I don't know. And maybe that's why, maybe it takes a uh, big paradigm shift times in life to remind us that we should be asking that question more often, right? But, um, but just to really be asking, what does God want for Tim's life and ours? And, and, um, and, then, to, and then to ask yourself too, on a personal level, you know, what are my dreams for the next five to 10 years of my life? What are Tim's dreams, right? And how did those things all intersect together, right? You know, God, God wants us to share with him the desires of our heart, right? Uh, and 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 he definitely has a, a a good and providential 
plan for us. And so that's part of that whole process is engaging in that. And I think it's just this one is a good times so where you can um, can really say, you know, uh, and as you start thinking about that question, then to think on a more practical level um, in terms of what areas do any of our family members, including our child with a disability, right, uh, have the need to grow in grace, grow in character, and grow in skills, right? Any of those practical areas. So, um, so I think what this kind of uh, situation provides a good opportunity, and I'm, I am talking myself into this. Right now. So I guess if I'm not offering the 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 uh, ten step plan of how <laughs> how to organize the life of your child with an, an adult with a disability, right? That's not my plan. I, I, but. But I do think it is, I'm, I'm trying to see this more as this is a good opportunity because we all become like, sort of like the frog in the kettle, right? Nice. You know, stuff just changes slowly around us. That's one of the, once one of the great benefits. I, I do wish Red and Cecilia live closer than Caroline than they do, but we are very blessed to have them less than three hours away, right? But the thing is they're far enough away that when they come in, they sometimes see things that go, yeah, <laughs> how long is, Tim been doing that, right? Or how long have you been, <laughs> how long have you been not paying attention to this, right, mom, or whatever? And so and that's actually, this is just a helpful reset. It's an opportunity for a reset, right? So I've been trying to look at it more, more that way. And I, I think a couple of things I could say just from our last couple of weeks. One of them has been a really great, uh, opportunity for Tim to spend more time with Fred. So even though Fred's retired, he's working part-time and Tim has caregivers in three days a week and set Fred's mom's one day a week and he works every evening, right? So, but right now none of that's going on and Fred's not working as much and they've just been spending a lot more time together and it's been great. I mean, Fred taught Tim how to drive the ZTR mower. It still creates an interesting pattern in the backyard, but we'll get there. And so that's all good. <laughs> But Tim is loving it. He's loving it. I should, I should send you a picture. You can, maybe you can post the picture because he's driving. Do you know what I mean? Like driving awesome. is really not on the road going to work for us where we live. But but he is able to drive and and do the flat parts of the yard with the lawnmower, which has just met a really huge need for him. And it's sort of like a little, it's sort of like a rite of passage thing that lots of other kids go through. And if you learn how to drive, you're riding a lawnmower and Tim's achieved it at 27 and it's awesome so um the th they've just been doing things like we had to take down a bunch of trees and even he's been helping fred stack wood you know splitting stack wood and that's just they're having their guy time right and that's been that's been a really um it's just i can just see that there's been a real need for that and it's really been met in this time period in a unique way and and it's let's just need to see god use that as a blessing um, another area is kind of in the area of interest of, uh, as I said, Tim has an apartment in our basement, right? We have caregivers that come and go, um, but not all caregivers are all skilled at all things, right? And so, and so in, you know, I would say most of our caregivers have been wonderful people. Most of them aren't um, diligent house cleaners. Right? So when they're the people that are teaching your kids how to clean their apartment, you just don't always get maybe the results that you would hope for. So, uh, and that's okay because they bring other gifts to this. So that's not a, that's not a yes. slam for anybody. But what is caught in this whole thing about needing to be more hygienic, even about countertop surfaces and, you know, door yes. handles and all that. And just being able to talk through, you know, think about, okay, so this, maybe this is a little bit of a, um, what, you know, a little rabbit trail. <laughs> it's me. So anyway, uh, it's... <laughs> So, you know, if a lot of kids with intellectual disability don't get a lot of science, right? So you don't really have a strong idea of what bacteria is and what good roles it plays in our lives and bad roles. And so it gives you a unique opportunity to talk more about there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria, right? And this is a bad bacteria. There's some that can be killed by medicine and some that can't, right? And so anyway, it's just given us a context to talk about some of these health things in the kitchen. And Tim has just stepped up like unbelievably to... You know, I, I sat down, we, we clean out its kitchen in terms of simplifying it more, too many things, right? Made it easier to clean off the counters and then taught him a rhythm for cleaning the counters every time after he makes a sandwich or cooks something or whatever, right? And so, uh, so he's doing it 
you know, and it's the beauty of a lot of kids with intellectual disability. When you teach him a new pattern, new habit, he's in it, especially kids with Down syndrome, he has a groove there. He is in the groove. <laughs> and he's doing a great job. And I wouldn't have gotten there if we hadn't had this time and this, actually, this pressure to kind of up the game on, on healthy habits. And that may sound like a small thing, but you know, if you're going to live in your own place someday, right, you have to be able to live safely in terms of keeping things clean and keeping refrigerators clean and not eating old food all these things that we're always trying to figure out ways to work on so um so yeah oh no, no. okay so here's another one here's <laughs> this related to cleaning too are we out of time <laughs> so 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 tim has been cleaning his bathroom but he came up the other day because he was out of cleaning supplies and then he handed me the windex bottle and i said oh are you doing the mirrors and he said no i'm doing the sink and i said okay so we had somewhere along the line lost track of which bottle did which thing right and so it was just a good opportunity again right, to be more involved in what's going on that i kind of let caregivers sort of like bridge the gap in between so yes. yeah so it just has made me realize i need to be more engaged on some things that i've been a little bit slack on so so we went back to the you know yeah bathroom cleaners for bathroom appliance <laughs> So yeah, so it's good. Um, let's see, spiritually, spiritually it's made me think more about, uh, more than just Tim's physical care. It's just really easy as your kids get older for some reason. And I don't know how much, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I would pin that on. I'll just say that at least for us at times, it's just been easy to focus on the job and the staff that comes and goes and, food and clothing and somehow the, the spiritual elements to drift a little bit it's like and in the sense he, he's getting to church right he's getting to church he's involved in the praise band was, he helps out in the you know children's sunday school but but i know i've known for a long time i've really needed to do some things to help him with a regular devotional life and so and so and, and you know from that from way back i always wanted there to be some online devotions for adults with intellectual disabilities and and it was always a sort of hard thing to get um figuring out how would we do that? And how do you do it professionally? And what's kind of beautiful about this whole scenario right now is how professional something is, it's just gone out the window, right? People are just recognized it doesn't have to have a professionally designed meme in the background or something, right? That flashes up and then right? it, just, it just takes a person who's really faithfully communicating God's word in some way that other people can get it. So for example, Tim, has gone to Hand Evangelism Ministries International, has a camp that he's gone to, and they're based in Akron, which is in Lancaster County, and they've been doing some online devotionals for uh, the folks that they minister to, and he just, we sat down and did, I said, today, I said, let's just sit down and look at one, Tim, and he just, we did it together, and he loved it, and it was, it was great, and I think that, for me, that was very motivating, not just to find more, but maybe to create some, and just say, you know what, it didn't have to be <laughs> doesn't have to be perfect, right? Let's just do some th simple things that just reach a, a group of his peers right here, you know, or just do it for Tim. I don't know. Some kind of rambling there, but I I think those have been big areas of growth in terms of how we're looking at how do we love Tim well, right? How do we continue to prepare Tim for life, right? Um, and uh, even things like thinking through, all right, great, this has been we had a great run on these jobs. Are these the jobs you want to do, Tim, for the next five years? Maybe, maybe it's time to sit down and think about that. You know, we've gone through everything like, is this where we should be living? Should we be living closer to where Tim? We do that every couple of years. <laughs> Can we be closer, closer to Tim's work? Well, not if he's going to switch jobs, <laughs> right? But just, just thinking, just thinking, I think it's just a good opportunity. Um, and to kick these things around, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say one of the things I love that's coming out of the opportunities is that they're not these great big intentional plans that you've made now mm -hmm. applying yourself to, but you're seizing the opportunities that the Lord brings about in the spaces of time and in the ways that we now uniquely have opportunity to do that we didn't have before. And I think some of our our listeners have asked questions about how much do we be intentional? You know, how much do I need to plan versus how much do I, can I enjoy and relax a little bit and yeah. enjoy 
days that are just more normal and maybe have missed things. Maybe I haven't, and maybe we are going to get behind, but maybe it's okay because we'll learn to mow the lawn and yeah. we'll learn to, to clean ca our countertops and use yeah. tools that we never would have gotten to had we not lost. So I love hearing that it, you're seizing the things that, that opportunity brings about, not necessarily intentionally planning for them. Like most of our lives with kids with disabilities is so much of a plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, there's, you know, when they're younger, somehow you, it, they're, when they're really little, when they're infants in particular. So if you had a child with autism, it may not have had been dealing with this in infancy, but right in infancy where the child with Down syndrome can be recognized, uh, oh, everything's going to happen on a different timetable. But then somehow when they get out of, <laughs> somehow, somehow when they get out of, they graduate from high school, somehow you, I don't know, you just think somehow that's changed, but it hasn't changed. It's just, you're still just on a different timetable. And all of a sudden you go, oh, look, we are still learning things. We're learning things that maybe other kids would have learned in high school, but we're learning them at 27, but we're still learning, right? So that, I think the big, the big plus, the big happy face, <laughs> this thing has been, there's always continued opportunities to keep learning and growing. And those increments are gonna look different for every adult child, but they're still there, right? And I think for, as parents go, and uh, so if I go back to my book again, right, to so the chapter on, um, okay, we changed the title on this one, so I'm going to forget what it's called. <laughs> but it's one way I talk about the great opportunity, right? It's on discipleship. There we go. So, which is, I talked in there about the difference between an agenda-centered life, right, um, and a relationship-centered life, right? And and so I think it's really easy for me as Tim got older and I had a little bit more independence myself, right? To drift more into an agenda centered life again. And this has kind of blown that out of the water yeah. <laughs> in, a good, in a good way, right? And it's just kind of like, it's sort of like God told me that I'm going, okay, Steph, you want to have a, to reset on a little bit more agenda, a little more relationship centered life on what, on re looking at what some of Tim's, unique needs are right now and invest in those right and i'd love to say oh yes of course i will <laughs> without hesitation right but i do hesitate i mean if i'm honest there are times i do hesitate i go hey, what are the things i want to do right and so yes. if i'm really honest it becomes an issue of the heart right it really becomes what's really in play here is the issue of the heart so the great opportunity again as it isn't everything is for heart change right then some dying unto self um to say, all right, there's there are some places here where I probably need to, I need a reset, right? I need a reset. And I think that's such a good reminder in the midst of this. You we say this a lot in the ministry that the only behaviors that we really can control our own, even then, where we're praying for grace and we're repenting of sin and we're trying to figure out those idols that we're clinging to and. So you've just illustrated all that so well. Um, and this kind of brings us to the place where I want to pause for a minute and I want to say to viewers, she's referencing a little bit having um, kind of a second win for the second half, which is what we're bringing her on to do um, a live online training. It's free. Um, it will be May the 7th at 8 p.m., which is Thursday night, Eastern time. Um, we'll put the link in the show notes and the registration link will be there. Um, Steph, can you kind of give us a tease about what that will be? And then we'll pause and um, we are going to start a new conversation after that. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll confess that I, that I uh, borrowed that title <laughs> from a book, actually, that was on uh, um, midlife crises, right? And... Um, but I, th I think the title really does capture the challenge of parenting uh, uh, adults with disabilities, right? Because you kind of crest the hill of when they come out of the high school experience. And, and it really does feel like, and I don't say this to discourage anyone, I just say it as a reality, <laughs> that, that as much progress as has been made in, in culture at large and in our churches and in our own perspectives, right? that still when you crest the hill after high school, what has been a fairly well-defined path that is inhabited by a lot of other people with you, you crest this hill and all of a sudden you realize, oh, great Scott, <laughs> there's no path at all, right? There's really a field and there are a lot of folks milling around down there. <laughs> 
and that's and there's some and there's a it really uh, not nearly enough uh, paid people out there in that field, <laughs> right? And so, so I think one of the things that kind of struck me when I I'm giving you a long version, all right? When I cross crested that hill was like, am I really supposed to have the same amount of energy for the next twenty some years that I just had for the first twenty? Because I'm not sure I've got that in me, right? And so, figuring out uh, just like you said what what are reasonable expectations of myself of my child what is this different this is a par this is a paradigm shift right from one period of life to another um and that i don't think we are expected to do the same thing we're expected to do different things and if anything the aging process also puts us it gives us and again another great opportunity to actually lean into god reliance community engagement more, right? Interdependent relationships with other people, making it a, a, a more a cooperative effort. Our own mortality actually kind of defines that in a good way. So that's some of the stuff I think I like. You can't wait, can't wait. So you definitely want to make sure you register for that online training and invite friends, um, any fellow friends you know who are parenting in, um, adult children with disabilities, I think, would really be encouraged to join us. So what we had planned to do was take a pause here, and um, this will kind of conclude our part one, where we're getting stuff to think about themes um, that have emerged through these last few weeks. And we hope you'll join us for part two, which will talk a little bit more about the practical tips and ways to encourage um, each other to stay connected and how to keep going even though we don't exactly know what the next few weeks is full of life. So we hope you'll join us again and um, are so glad that you're with us today. And as always, please leave us some comments and send us questions. Um, your questions are the ones we wanna answer. So keep them coming so that we can give you what you really want to have. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>